When Henry VIII became king in 1509, he was young and very ambitious. He wanted to make his mark at home and abroad. One of the ways he did this was to create the country's first permanent fleet of warships. He called it his army by sea. He had inherited five ships from his father, but to add to the power of his army by sea, as soon as he came to the throne, Henry ordered two new ships, the Peter Pomegranate and her sister ship, the Mary Rose. The Mary Rose was launched two years later in 1511. During her time in the King's service, she served in two wars against France and one against Scotland. 34 years after her launch, a third war against France began, and the Mary Rose was called to defend Henry's kingdom against a massive French invasion fleet, bigger in fact than the famous Spanish Armada some 43 years later. But time was now running out for the Mary Rose and her crew. On a bright summer's day, the 19th of July, 1545, King Henry VIII stood here proudly watching his army by sea fight against the French in what was to become known as the Battle of the Solent. Cannons blazing, the Mary Rose, the pride of the fleet, fired guns mounted along one side of the ship straight towards French galleys who had broken away from the rest of their fleet. In readiness to fire again from the guns mounted on her other side, she immediately began to turn. As she turned, Henry watched in absolute horror as she heeled over too far. Water rushed in through her lower gun ports and flooded the decks. She sank in minutes. An eyewitness report tells us, all hands on board to the number of about 500 were drowned with the exception of about five and 20 or 30 servants, sailors and the like, who escaped. Many theories have been developed as to why she sank. Was she top heavy? We know Henry had recently ordered a refit to increase the number of large guns. Was there a freak gust of wind at just the wrong moment as she made that turn? Or was she just sunk by French cannonballs? Certainly French propaganda would have us believe that. La Mary Rose, one of their main ships, was sunk by gunfire, it said. Perhaps we will never know the real answer, but sink she did, with alarming speed, into the silty depths of the Solent. Turn the clock forward 420 years, and an enthusiastic historian and diver, Alexander McKee, began a search for historic shipwrecks in the Solent, including the Mary Rose. After six years of exploration, he and his team uncovered the first timbers and a large iron gun. They had found her. They were joined by an archaeologist, Margaret Rule, who actually learned how to dive so she could see the work being carried out for herself. She built up a whole team of maritime archaeologists to lead the divers in what was to become the largest ever underwater archaeological dig. Between 1979 and 1982, divers made a staggering 28,000 individual dives into the murky waters of the wreck, amounting to some 23,000 hours spent underwater. Over the years, time had taken its course and silt had steadily built up inside and all around the wreck until it became completely buried under the seabed. But in fact, this was to be her saving. The silt acted to preserve her hull and everything inside her. But for the divers, it was long and hard work. They used large underwater vacuum cleaners called airlifts to take away the silt as they exposed the timbers, objects and bones. Huge care had to be taken to ensure that no damage would be caused. Decks and cabins, cannons, longbows, chests and tools were all exposed and all these items, one by one, were cautiously brought to the surface. As the work carried on, and to the astonishment of all concerned, slowly but surely, a really large portion of her hull was revealed, much larger than anyone could have ever dreamt. In the end, almost half of the hull was found to be intact, virtually the whole of one side, the starboard side as it turned out. Since 1982, when she was finally raised from the seabed, 
Her remains and contents have been meticulously recorded and conserved by teams of specialist conservators and maritime archaeologists. There are obvious items like the weaponry, cannons, longbows, arrows, and so on, navigation equipment and tools, but also some small finds, like these knit combs. And if you look really closely, you can still see the knits themselves. These are among thousands of personal items found on board, 19,000 in total, and they can all tell historians huge amounts about Tudor life. On that fateful day in 1545, life stopped abruptly for the 500 or more men on board, and one dog, incidentally. Their belongings, the tools they used, their clothes, the food they ate, the plates they ate from, their very bones, everything was left exactly where it was when the ship sank. This ancient maritime disaster has provided us with a huge collection of the real objects that were being used by real people, one moment in time, preserved forever. And some of these objects are unique. For example, this is a musical instrument known as a stillshorm, an early type of oboe. It was found complete in its box. And there is not another example of it anywhere else in the world from this time. Indeed, until it was found, people thought that this was an instrument not invented until 50 years later. All these thousands of objects, large and small, have been or are still in the process of being conserved. This work will not be completed until 2016, over 30 years after they were brought to the surface. That's an indication of how many objects were found and the effort that has been needed to care for them. The same effort is true for the ship's structure. At the moment, the Mary Rose is being treated in an enormous conservation laboratory and a brand new museum is actually being built around her. The new building is being designed to allow the ship and the objects found inside her to be displayed together, so that visitors for the first time will eventually be able to see and understand what life would have been like through the eyes of the men on board. It won't be until 2016 that the final phase of the hull's conservation, the air drying, will be complete. Then visitors will be able to get a completely uninterrupted view of the original hull. This will be fully 34 years after she was raised. Coincidentally, this is the same number of years that she was in service in Henry VIII's army by sea. The Mary Rose rests only a few hundred yards from where she was built 500 years ago. It is hoped that further dives will take place in the future to find and raise more sections of her structure and contents still buried beneath the seabed and work will begin again to learn even more. Who knows, we may even be able to find out the real reason why she sank. <laughs>